My name is Robert M. Wood and I go by Dr. Bob these days. I have a degree in aeronautical engineering from the University of Colorado and then I subsequently got a PhD in physics from Cornell. And I went right into McDonnell Douglas as a young engineer and stayed with McDonnell Douglas for 43 years, graduating basically through the various management steps and wound up in charge of various aspects of our research and development programs. I had a story that I could tell to my management since since I concluded that the UFOs were real, one, one day when I was driving to work, I said, well, wow, there's no other solution. They're clearly real, they're clearly extraterrestrial, and they work somehow. And I think we ought to figure out how they work, because I wouldn't want to be the last aerospace company to discover gravity control. And Jim McDonald became aware of the fact that there was a symposium about to happen in Boston that uh, Philip Morrison and Carl Sagan were organizing on UFOs. So he apparently planted the seed in Sagan's ear and said, you know, there's a group at McDonnell Douglas who's studying UFOs. You might want to give them a call and see if they want to participate. Well, I had just finished reading Carl Sagan's wonderful book, Intelligent Life in the Universe, written in about 1966, and had a tremendous respect for the ideas that I had seen there, which included the serious consideration for extraterrestrial life. And so Carl called one day and introduced himself, and I was honored, of course, because you know he was clearly more outranking than I was uh, in terms of his profession at that time. <clears throat> and and uh, he, he said, I understand that you might be doing some work, and what would you want to talk about if we were asked to give a paper? And I said, well, Carl, one thing I wouldn't want to do is what everybody else is probably going to do, namely try to prove that they're real. I said, it's very clear to anybody who studies it at all that they're extraterrestrial. And the more, most important thing is to figure out how they work. So I would give a paper discussing the different avenues that one could explore in order to figure out how they work. And there was long silence on the phone, <laughs> and he never invited me to give the paper. So at, at that, I did, however, attend the conference anyway. And, uh, I uh, heard everybody else who, who was there. And, uh, it is conceivable that a spherical ship will land in front of the Washington Monument and a figure with four antennas and otherwise looking like the uh, professional football player will walk out <laughs> and demand to see our leader. But I, I hope uh, very much that the, the universe of circumstance is wider than the rather shoddy imaginations of science fiction writers for 30 or 40 years. And I'm pretty convinced it is. We've not found their guidance so great in any but the most modest activities, like going to the moon, which is not very much. May I reply to that one? <laughs> Life Beyond Earth. You see, uh, this is a beautiful exposition of the myths we live with. And the mind of man a symposium on extraterrestrial life. I realized that at that time I began to ask myself, is there some plan to control this process? That was just a sort of a subconscious thought that I had in my mind and I didn't really do much with, more with it then. So that's two stories that relate to my career.